The Economics of LARP, or the Failure of Market Forces. The research for this presentation was undertaken in 2019, which is obviously pre-COVID. Now, I don't think that's changed the fundamentals of what I found, but obviously information about travel may be quite different in the future. Who am I? My name is Rachel Thomas. I run events as part of Crooked House and Crooked House runs high concept, high budget events and has done since 2001. And these have included things like God Rest Ye Merry, the 1950s ghost story, a pulp event, Dick Britton and the Voice of the Seraph, and most recently, the Musketeers event, All for One. I'm a writer of LARP systems, including Cuckoo's Nest, the Glasgow University system, Cinedrama, which we use for Crooked House, and I'm also a creator of LARP universes. I've got a special interest in LARP production and exploring the economics of LARP. And as a background to this, I was a partner in a veterinary business, which was sold in 2016 for a seven figure sum. Now, unfortunately, not all of that came to me. I'm a director of Unknown Worlds, which is a company which has been set up to allow profound decisions and investors to buy a permanent LARP site to be used by Profound Decisions itself and other LARP runners within the UK. And I blog about this sort of stuff on Medium. I only recently came out as a LARPer to people at work. Previous to this, I'd gone away camping or I'd stayed in a youth hostel for a weekend with friends. LARP had actually become cooler. The advantage of a bunch of good photographs showing what we do and the general public getting into media such as Game of Thrones has meant, I think, that normal people are much more interested in LARP. Now, when I tell people about LARP, some of them really don't get it, but others are there saying, hey, that sounds really cool and possibly I'd like to have a go. And then shortly after that, we have the, that's amazing. I bet you can make lots of money out of that. And at that point, I sigh and I roll my eyes and generally I move the conversation onto something else. But just occasionally they get the rant. And the fact that, no, really you can't make lots of money out of LARP. And I wanted to explore why that was. In 2019, a lot of things happened in the LARP industry. Joe Back, who ran Fairweather Manor and College of Wizardry, went bust. Now, I don't think people lost interest in big stately houses with servants. That was the same year that the Downton Abbey film was released and did very well at the box office. And I don't think people lost interest in adolescent wizards at school because the cursed child in London is still selling out, or it was until it stopped running because of COVID, but it was still selling out every night, despite the fact that it was a two part show and it was difficult to actually combine those two shows into a sensible order sometimes. At the same time, Turbo Larp had to, to pull one of their major events because they didn't get enough signups. And in the autumn or winter of 2019, the three runs of College of Wizardry, which had been going to happen, were cut down to one due to lack of participant interest. So why do economics matter? Well, there are people out there who would like to run LARP as a business. I'd like to run LARP as a business if I could work out how to do it, but I haven't managed that yet. Generally, these people have a lot more energy and enthusiasm than me, possibly are younger in their career and think, yes, this is it, we can do it. And unfortunately, often they're disillusioned and sometimes they lose quite a lot of money in the process. If LARPs are economically viable, then it allows people in different financial situations to run LARPs. So you get a wider spread of LARP runners and therefore you can draw on other experiences. Well run LARP, and I think that does include financially, is a better experience for players and crew. If LARPs are successful and profitable, then they're able to donate money to charity in the way that Wing and a Prayer and the Quota did. and. If the LARP has a good economic background, you can subsidise less well-off players. So 
people who cannot afford the large headline ticket prices are able to come. It also improves accessibility if you have money within the budget that you can spend on these things. So, in 2015, Crooked House ran God Rest You Merry. This is the 1950s Christmas ghost story set in a wonderful house on Dartmoor in Devon in, in the UK. Now, how did we decide on a ticket price for that? Well, traditionally in the UK, LARPs had been pretty cheap. It would be 35 to 50 pounds for a weekend with people bringing tents, camping and doing their own catering. So we knew that model wasn't going to work. We got this great big site and that was going to be a big part of our budget. We looked at other events which had been run, which were similar to ours. And those seemed to cost about £180 for a weekend. That didn't quite work for our budget either. So we asked people how much they'd be willing to pay. And then we guessed and we guessed £250, which was a huge amount of money for a LARP event for most of the people we were talking to. We had a contingency plan. If the event didn't book up, we were going to rent out the rooms in the house to our friends for a weekend and we'd just about make our money back on that. We wouldn't make too much of a loss. As it was, the event booked up within 24 hours. We were sold out almost immediately. We ran an event which was fantastic. It was really good fun to run. Our players really enjoyed it. And doing so cost the organisers £2,565.69. pence. Yeah, between two of us, we spent £2,500 to run a LARP event. Now, it was great. It was a really good LARP event. But there's a lot of other things we could have done with that £2,500. We could have gone on a really nice holiday. We went away and thought about it. We got over the burnout. We planned. We started working with Harry Harold and we ran all for one. A Musketeers LARP set in again a wonderful big house, this time on the border between England and Wales. And we got better at budgeting. And this time it only cost us £210 to run an event, £70 each for the organisers. Now perhaps we're really bad at budgeting. Maybe I'm the wrong person to be doing this talk, but I don't think so. In each time we had a budget, we knew what we wanted to spend money on, but we just decided it was worth spending more money to have a better event for our players. We are fairly savvy people financially. We manage all right in our daily lives. We're not in huge debt, but why can't we run LARP events that make money? I was talking about this to someone who works within the geek industry and he volunteered the fact that his company runs a big yearly event with a £150 ticket price for about 2,000 people. And if you do the sums on that, the event costs them 750000 to run. They get about 300000 from ticket prices. But what they do is they put the rest of this down to marketing. They have KPIs of all sorts of different things that they hit. They stream, they advertise online. It's really great for their company and it's worth the money they spend. So have we just been running advertising events to make our name? Is that what we write all for one and grim off as? Or is it just really hard to make money from LARP? I went away and looked at this and I looked to see what things were like LARP, but slightly different. And interactive narrative events are big buzzwords in the entertainment industry at the moment. Just look how excited everyone's getting about Disney's Galaxy Edge. But there are similar things. There's secret cinema where you enter a wonderfully set dressed environment to interact with characters from a film and then watch the film at the end. There's Punch Drunk who are probably the poster guys for the interactive entertainment industry. Things like Broken Bone Bathtub are a small theatrical performance where members of the public enter someone's home and actually interact directly with the actor in this production. Or The Void, which is a stadium type VR performance. And those have high ticket prices. So people are obviously prepared to pay 
for interactive narrative experiences. I also looked at things that are similar to LARP, but perhaps more accessible. So what would you find on the high street? There are escape rooms. There are things like Magic Quest and Wizard Quest, which are scavenger hunts where you run around set dressed environments, collecting items which are necessary for a plot. And then because a lot of people go to LARP to fight, to have great battles, I looked at axe throwing, which you can do on some high streets and also in some more rural wooded environments. And those range from about $15 per hour up to about $60 per hour. Again, people are paying a significant amount of money to do these things. The type of LARP events I tend to go to are often several day long. So I looked at what do the other experiences cost? Things like Glastonbury Music Festival, glamping, weekend at centre parks where you have a lot of entertainment laid on, or Alton Towers Theme Park. And again, the costs there, things like Glastonbury, £270 for a three day music festival, not dissimilar to LARP. I wanted to explore the economics of this if we actually ran LARPs as a money-making professional enterprise. So I went back to All For One, our most recent event, and tried to work out what it would have cost if we were actually paying people properly for their time. We ran a fantastic event with a bunch of really amazing crew. And these were people who gave their free time who helped us out, who went above and beyond, and they were fantastic. But they were all volunteers. And there doesn't seem to be, at least in the UK LARP industry, a way of remunerating people properly for their time. So I wanted to look at how much it would have cost. Just to give you the ticket price and give you an idea, All For One had a £325 ticket with a patron option. This meant that some very generous players paid £400 to enable people who couldn't afford a ticket to come. And those tickets were reduced to £250. The prices here were for staying in the main house and having a fully catered event. We did also have cheaper tickets if you wanted to stay off site. Breaking down our budget. We paid £1,668.96 pence to costume 33 supporting cast. We also borrowed costume from Profound Decisions, but the, the commercial cost for the costume we hired would have been £3,500. We were very lucky that we got mates rates on this. Our musketeers tabards were made by Jude Reed, who did an amazing job in return for a player space in the game, which effectively cost us £325. We paid for the materials, I made the sashes. So in total, we paid about £3,000 for costume for this event. And the commercial cost, had we been paying full price and hiring this, would have been about £5,000. So immediately, our budget cost was about two thirds of what it should be. We had a bunch of amazing props which were made by Bill and Kira, and I think it's worth reading the props list just to see what they made, because there are some fantastic things there. They were very generous and just charged us the materials cost. We paid £1,220 for the materials. I asked them to work out how long they'd spent and how much this would have cost if they'd been making these professionally because both of them used to work as art department and prop makers for films. It took them about 91 hours in the lead up to the event to make these things. And if they'd been charging us for that, the professional cost would have been £4,260. Catering. Our food costs were £1,752.03. We were really lucky that Rupert, Fred, Joe and Nick worked tirelessly in our kitchen, whilst also interacting in character with the players at the same time for the whole event, and we didn't have to pay them anything. But if we had, our total food costs would have been over £3,000, and that's at £9 an hour, which is a living wage in the UK. I also approached a commercial LARP catering company 
to see how much they would have charged us for catering the event. And they were a bargain. So Kaggle's catering would have charged £38 a head and that would have cost £2,660. However, they were at pains to point out that they're not entirely commercial. They're a profit share company, which means they don't have to worry about minimum wage or pension or anything like that. They just take the profits from what they do at the weekends and split it between their staff. So again, they're not entirely commercial. I also looked at the time that was put in before the event by the directors and writers. So we had three core cool writers who worked on this event for a year. This involved the three of us in a one to two hour planning meeting once a week on Mondays and then with other work during the week. So on average, I would say 16 hours were worked in the week for the whole of the run up to the event or 768 hours over the year. If we work that out at the living wage price, that would be £6,912. Now, this wasn't budgeted into the cost. We all gave our time for free. But if you're running this commercially, then really you should be earning more than the living wage. These are specialist tasks and the people performing them often do something similar in their day jobs where they charge at least £50 an hour for this. Now, if you were actually charging £50 an hour for the, the time for writing and running an event not on site, that's £38,400, which pushes your costs up dramatically. So what should All for One have cost if we were charging for it properly? Well, we've looked at the prices here, the actual cost for running, which was £353. If we paid our writers living wage beforehand and then had volunteers on the day so we didn't pay any of our supporting cast, ticket price goes up to about £750. If we paid a specialist wage beforehand and had volunteers on the day, it's £1,714 for a ticket. And if we paid specialist wages before and actually paid our staff living wage on the day for their time, your ticket price goes up to £2,000. Now, that's a lot to pay for a LARP event, I would agree. But how does that compare to other things? Well, if you look at the events earlier, the interactive narrative events, which people are paying for on the high street, it's not that dissimilar if you break it down per hourly cost. LARP's expensive because it's a whole weekend. You're on site for three days probably. And our original cost was five pounds per hour or 10 pounds per hour of game time because the hourly time includes people sleeping at night. But if everyone was paid, that takes it up to 30 pounds an hour for the time you're on site, similar to some of these other events. So would people pay that? Are people interested in LARP at that sort of price? I decided I needed to know more. I went to look at what does LARP cost? And first of all, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who helped me with this. The next part of my talk could not have happened without people giving up their time and filling in a quite lengthy questionnaire for me. And that was really helpful. So I made up two questionnaires, one for event runners and one to players. And I got 91 responses from event runners and 367 player responses, which I think are reasonable data sets to work with. Now, this isn't perfect because by nature, this is a self-selecting population. These are people who are interested enough to give up their time to tell me what they did about LARP events and how much they paid. I found these people by sharing these questionnaires on Facebook. So I post it in LARP groups that I'm in, both UK and international. I asked friends to share them. And occasionally I would actually send the questionnaire to commercial companies because I was really interested in people who were trying to run LARP commercially and how they managed to do that. So I don't think this is a perfect data set, but it's the best I could get. And again, thank you very much to anyone who helped with this. I looked at where the responses came from 
And I think we have a reasonably good cover of countries where people run LARPs, mainly in English language. Obviously, they're running LARPs in their own languages as well, but my contacts are mainly people who play LARP in the UK or international LARP in English. But we got a really good spread from across Europe, North America, Australia, New Zealand, and a little bit in Africa and South America. So I think this is quite representative. When I was asking questions about money, I asked people to use pounds, euros and dollars interchangeably just to save complex currency conversions. Again, it's not perfect, but it gives you a headline number, which is about right. I asked event organisers what size of event do they run, for how many players. And as you'd expect, most people run for small groups for up to 80 players. We had one or two people who ran events which are larger than that, including one which is over 1,500 players, which is a lot of people to organise for. And I also asked event organisers whether they ran these things commercially or as a hobby. And as you might expect in an industry where lots of us are hobbyists, 80% ran as a hobby, 14% ran commercially, and 6% classified themselves as others. I then asked the event runners how much they were charging for a ticket. There's quite a range of prices here, with the most expensive ticket being between three and four hundred pounds. And as I would expect, there's a high bar where people are paying between 30 and 60 pounds for an event, because that's what we thought was average for a lot of events in the UK. Interestingly, this is different from the amount that players are paying. If you ask players, what do you usually pay for a LARP event? And with this, I included food and accommodation if it was included in the ticket price, but not travel. And the average players are paying is between 80 and 120 pounds. 2% of players are paying between four and 500 pounds. And 1% are paying between 500 and 750 pounds. So there's quite a spread there. Interestingly, event runners, this 1% of players paying between 500 and 750 pounds for an event, that's 36 players on this survey. If you could get all of them to come to your event, you'd be able to run a pretty successful high cost event. It's worth thinking about. Then we got to economic nitty gritty. So event runners, I asked them, on average, do your events make a profit? And 40% said yes, but 60% said no. Now, that may be by design. A lot of these events are being run as hobbies by people who are doing it for enjoyment and for the enjoyment of their friends. It may be they don't want to make a profit. They just want to break even. And perhaps they're much better at budgeting than we were, and they managed to do that. But I'm not sure because when I asked organisers if they made personal payments to ensure their events break even, 42% of organisers are subsidising their events. So 40% of events make a profit, 60% don't, and 42% of events need the organisers to pay to run them. Does that matter? I think it does. Because the trouble is, if your average event price and what people expect to pay is falsely skewed by event organisers paying themselves to run the event, then it means that events can only be run by relatively affluent organisers. And if that's the price point that the market can stand, people who need to charge more because they can't subsidise events aren't able to do so. And that means that a lot of interesting stories don't get told. People who aren't as financially secure, maybe with edgy marginalised existences, or just not as good a financial backing at the moment, aren't able to run events. And that means that you exclude poorer wannabe event runners from sharing their experience. And I think in doing that, you lose a lot of interesting games and different perspectives. It would be a pity if people who had great stories to tell weren't able to do so because they couldn't afford 
to invest their own money into doing it. And then I wondered what people would do if they had more money to run their event. If organisers were able to charge more for tickets, how would this improve the experience either for players or for organisers or for crew? So I asked organisers what they would spend their money on if there was more of it. The majority of them said things that would improve the events. So things like props or costumes. So 68% said that they would improve the event and 84% would either improve the event or save towards future events they ran. Only 11% of those who responded to my survey said they would use any additional money to pay staff. Just to give you an idea how many are currently paying, 7% of the respondents currently paid people when preparing for the event and 15% paid organisers or crew for their work on the site. So at the moment, very few people are paying staff. So that's the actual figures now. I then wanted to know what were the possibilities for the future? This is what people are paying just now. What would people pay for the right event? So I asked the player responders, what's the most that they have paid for an event? And this was for a ticket, including food and accommodation, but not travel, because obviously that's a high variable depending on where you're coming from. It turns out that 3% of players were paying more than £750 for an event or had paid more than £750 for an event ticket. I then wanted to know what the most players would pay is. So how much could ticket prices go up to and still have people attending the event? So I asked them, how much would you pay for a ticket to the LARP event of your dreams? And in that I wanted food and accommodation included, but not travel again. Now, this was really interesting because it looks as if if you make the right event, then people will pay to come. 88 out of 367 players, which is 24% of the respondents here, would pay more than £500 for a ticket for the LARP event of their dreams. Now, it means you have to make your events pretty appealing, but people would pay. And then I wanted to factor in total cost. So how much would you pay for the LARP event of your dreams, including your ticket, your food and accommodation, travel, costume, props, any visas, that sort of thing. And 23% of respondents would pay over a thousand pounds for that event. I think LARP is not just the, the domain of students now. There are people who perhaps started as students many years ago have moved on in their life and have more disposable income and are prepared to pay to get the experience they want. I mean, I know myself, I used to attend LARPs at least every month, if not several times a month during the summer. And I couldn't do that now, not with my job, not with my life, but I'm happy to pay significantly more to attend two to four wonderful LARP experiences in the year. And I think there, there are other people like that. The other thing that I wanted to know was, how does this compare with what people would spend on other things? I asked people, what would you pay for a week's holiday on average? So again, we included transport, accommodation, meals and excursions. And I think the figures there are not dissimilar from what people would pay for a LARP event of their dreams. So it seems that players will pay the equivalent of a week's holiday to go to a LARP event. Now, what I've been talking about here are, can we, could we, should we have high ticket price LARPs? And actually that's quite a contentious issue. When I talk about this online, or when I hear conversations between LARPers, often you'll hear people saying, how on earth can they justify charging that for an event? That's ridiculous. Or, what can they do to make an event worth that much money? Or, no, I'd never pay that, it should be much cheaper. And there seems to be a concern that if you charge a lot for an event, you're pricing people out of the market. There's a perceived unfairness with this, that certainly it's the view of some people that all LARP events should be affordable for everyone. I'd argue that isn't the case. In the same resort, you'll have 
two-star hotels and five-star hotels. And the costs will be quite different, even though the basics, providing you with shelter and a bed and maybe breakfast, are similar. People pay a lot more for some hotels than others. There are also hugely different costs involved in running an event. Taking a tent, camping in the woods, running through and playing dirty Celts, like we used to, that's pretty cheap. You don't have a huge site cost for that. People can bring their own food. You've got minimal setup, maybe some props, maybe some costumes. Those are events that can be run quite cheaply. If you're talking about something which is set in a stately home or a castle with huge site costs and much more costume and props and investment in the event, that's going to be a higher ticket price. And I don't think that's something you should feel guilty about. I think you should be able to charge what you need to make the event that you want to make and enable you and your players to tell the stories that you want to. We then get on to another contentious issue here, which is should you have some sort of VIP ticket to let your players get in character or out of character perks? For Fairweather Manor, you had noble tickets and servant tickets, which were differently priced, although the servant tickets weren't that cheap. Secret Cinema, which is not LARP, but as I say, is similar, has VIP tickets and the VIP tickets allow you access to certain areas. They allow you more contact with the actors in the, the latest Bridgerton Secret Cinema. They give you pre-written plot, which is not something that they've had before. So if you pay extra, you can have a more interactive experience. That works for them. And I think it's up to individual event organisers whether that's something they're interested in. For me, having players who pay to have a better LARP experience, that makes me slightly uneasy. And I'm not sure exactly why, but it seems wrong to me that you should be able to pay extra for better in-character things. Better out-of-character things, better food, better accommodation, nicer rooms. Yep, I'm absolutely on board with that. But for me, that that's where the line is. I wouldn't want somebody to be able to pay a lot more to have a better LARP experience. But perhaps other people think that's fair and that's something you should consider. Another question is whether you have patron tickets. So in my survey, 23% of games runners offered patron tickets. So these are reduced price tickets for people who couldn't otherwise afford to go to the event. And sometimes it's certain criteria, so they say for students or the unwaged. Some of them offer patron tickets for anyone who feels that they should be able to have one. And I think that's a great idea. That's something where people who are better financially off can give back to the hobby. They can subsidise a player who maybe wouldn't otherwise have got there. And it allows a broader demographic of players within the event. You can limit it. You can say, we can only offer cut price tickets if someone else subsidises them. So you can do it with a, a net zero impact on your budget, but it does enable more people from different backgrounds to come to the event. And I think that's something which is really worthwhile. So for those of you who are wanting to make money out of LARP or thinking about whether it might be possible, how can you make LARP more commercial? One way is reruns. It's not something we do as Crooked House. We want to throw everything into the first event and then we've done it. So we're bored and we move on to something else. But many really popular events have reruns and that allows you to reuse costumes and props and spend less of your valuable time in the setup for the event and the prep for the event because you've already got those characters written or you've got the plot or you've got the props. We made costume. We got a whole lot of Musketeers tabards specially made for our event. But did we need to? Could we have hired that? And is there some central prop store where you could get those things from? And actually, the other thing that I think would be really interesting is should we have some sort of LARP database where you can contact other event runners and say, oh, you made a Vorpal blade last year. Can I borrow it for my event? Where people can 
change and exchange props or costumes and cut down the costs for each of us running events. I don't know of anything like that, but I think it would be a really interesting thing to, to look at. The obvious way of making LARP more commercial is to charge more for tickets. And I think there are players who will pay more for tickets, but you need to decide if that's what you want to do and if that's the type of experience that you're offering. And the other possibility is to offer stratified tickets, have different layers of tickets, so you can pay extra for a new experience. Collaboration between different event runners can help a lot. So for example, when Profound Decisions was running Empire, and that hasn't happened for obviously for the last 18 months, but they had an insurance, which they also allowed smaller clubs and societies to buy into so that you were covered by their insurance for a small amount per year which was much cheaper than having to take out insurance yourself as an individual club. And when I talk to people in other countries from the UK, they often had some sort of government subsidy to run their LARPs. Now, in the UK, you may be able to get grants from things like the Art Council. Perhaps there's something in your country where you can either get some sort of grant or a subsidy to run this as a participation event or an entertainment. The other thing which is worth looking at if you're running high cost events is can your players pay in installments? That makes a huge difference to whether people can afford the ticket. If you can offer installments over nine months or a year beforehand, that's going to greatly benefit your player base. Look at your marketing budget. Are there people out there who don't know about your events? And I would say in general, yes. When I asked event runners how much they spent on marketing, 50 out of 60 respondents didn't spend anything on it. And on average, less than 1% of the budget was spent on marketing. If you're trying to run events with a higher ticket price than perhaps you have before, look at your marketing. There are people out there who don't know about your events who might be interested and perhaps they would be prepared to spend the amount of money you want to look at for a ticket price. Don't be shy of putting something into marketing. Facebook is a really good way to advertise. You can target your demographic really tightly to interests, to geographical areas if you want to. Although certainly pre-COVID people would travel for LARP events and there are international players flying all over the world to play. I assume that will come back with time, but it may take several months, a few years when restrictions lift for that to be true. Next question, should you charge more for tickets? Well, what's the point of you running the event? What are you trying to get? Are you doing this because you want to make money? Is this purely a financial venture? Do you want to have an amazing event? Do you want to make sure you can do all the special effects and have all the tech and all the props and the wonderful costumes you need? In which case, you probably need to charge a bit more. Do you want to throw a party for your friends or just give something back to the hobby? If you want to do that, then does it need to be complex? Does it need to be expensive? Or can you just provide something where people can have a great time but they don't have to spend out a lot of money? In my opinion, stratification of the market is a good thing. There should be events for everybody. There should be cheap events, there should be expensive events. There should be events which are hugely aspirational with great props and costumes and locations, but not all events have to be like that. I think there should be events for everyone, but not every event has to be for everyone. And don't feel guilty about it. If you want to run an event which is costly, and you can justify that cost and you're not exploiting your players, you're telling the story that you want to tell in the way that you want to tell it, go for it. Don't feel guilty and don't be bullied by people because your event has a high cost or a high ticket price. If you can justify it, go for it. If you do decide you want to charge more for tickets, how do you do that? Well, as I said, instalments are one thing. If you give people time to pay, then they can spread these higher costs. Patron tickets. Those enable people who are more able to pay to pay a bit more and people who are less able to pay to pay a bit less. Advertise your event. Make sure that if you're 
appealing to a smaller section of the LARP community, you can actually get in contact with those people. So don't just look at your immediate friends and social group. See who else is out there who might want to come to your event. Look at grants or innovation funds. Are there ways that you can get extra money to run this event, which doesn't just come from your players? And maybe think about selling tickets to non-LARPers. There are lots of people out there playing, paying for interactive experiences and they're prepared to pay a lot of money. Could they come to your event without spoiling it for others? I mean, maybe they'll turn into LARPers. I have this idea about running a commercial interactive event where members of the public have one experience and there's a LARP going on in the background that maybe they don't even know about, but I haven't got around to fleshing that idea out. But I think economically, it's a good one because members of the public will pay a lot for something they perceive as special. The world's most luxurious murder mystery is Agatha Christie's Murder on the Blue Train, which is run on the Orient Express. And again, pre-COVID, this was running three times a year. Now, regular tickets for this event are $10,000 per couple, and it's a one day event. There's accommodation overnight beforehand, but this is a 24 hour event. And the VIP package costs $28,000 per couple. And again, this is something that pays. This sells out each time they run it. I mean, it sounds amazing and it looks amazing. There are certainly people who are paying a lot of money to do things which are not unlike LARP. So it's possible that people will pay quite a lot for your event as well. And as players, please be kind to your organisers. Remember, the organisers of this event are giving up their time and in a lot of cases their money to enable you to have an event. These are volunteers, so allow them time to respond to you. Give them a bit of leeway. Don't expect professional customer service from a hobby. These people are generally holding down full-time jobs in other things. They can't respond to you immediately because they don't have a customer service department who are just there waiting for you. So cut them some slack. Remember that they should be enjoying this as well. Don't press them. If they've asked you to contact them by an event email address, for example, don't send them personal messages through their Facebook. Let them have a life and let them concentrate on the event when they're planning to run the event. They will have allocated time. Let them work through things then and be forgiving. Not everything will be perfect. Not everything's perfect in most parts of your life, but I think people have high expectations from LARP. It's something they look forward to and something they really want to enjoy. But make sure that you give the organisers a chance to enjoy the hobby themselves as well. Be kind to them. And those of you who want to run events, what should you do? Well, keep your eye on the target. Work out what you want to run. Work out what makes your event special, why people might want to come and how to tell the story that you want to tell. Then work out the budget, then set a ticket price. Don't be put off by others saying, no, you can't possibly do that. That shouldn't be allowed. Don't do that. Do what you want to do and enjoy it because that's what LARP's there for. It's something that we all should be able to enjoy, whether we're playing whether we're crewing or whether we're running an event. This is something we give up our free time for and it should be an enjoyable and fun experience for everyone. I'd like to thank the photographers who gave me the excellent pictures to illustrate this talk and have helped to make LARP look cool. So thank you all. And also a huge amount of thanks to all the people who filled in my really quite long surveys and enabled me to get the, the data and the information that I based this talk on. If you want to hear more from me, you can contact me at StoryWorlds. I'm at Great Big Show Off on Twitter and I blog about LARP and other related topics on Medium. Thank you very much for listening. Bye bye.